Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video you're checking out a brand new solo PvE Nightblade build for the Elder Scrolls Online. And this is not just any Nightblade build, what we have is a hybrid setup combining dual wield, bow, as well as some of the Magicka class-based skills of the Nightblade, which make for a really fun and unique playstyle in my opinion. We've got great healing, great survivability, as well as damage. And if you're looking for something that can be pretty different while still being effective in soloing dungeons, soloing world bosses, then you should definitely check this out. As usual, we'll go over the stats, we'll go over the gear options, skill choices, champion points, we'll talk about the outfit style and more coming up next. Alright, so let's jump right into the stats on this solo hybrid build for the Nightblade class. Keep in mind though, this is a solo build primarily. It's not a pure DPS build. What that means is we have a balance of stats here. We need to focus on not just pure damage, but things like survivability, healing, tankiness, and damage all at the same time. Not to mention, I'm also doing something special with this build, and that is it is a hybrid setup. That means I'm not focused purely on stamina or magicka. I'm using a combination of both, which means my stats are a little bit split. So it is a unique build. It is a bit of a challenge to pull off but I think it's a lot of fun. So let's jump right into the stats. We have about 25,000 max Magicka, almost 24,000 max health, another 25,000 on our max stamina. Our recoveries do go up a little bit uh, with our potion active, but this will also be a very potion heavy build, which means a lot of the sustain that we get is gonna be coming through potions. Therefore, we really don't need a very high recovery at all. In terms of our weapon and spell damage, seeing at about 2,800, 2,700 weapon and spell damage, this does go up quite a bit with our buffs active. So for example, we've got a Berserker enchant, as well as Major Brutality and Sorcery gets us close to 4K there. With a potion active as well, that gets us over 4,700 weapon damage, 4,600 spell damage. So very good damage overall for a hybrid build. Now in terms of your defenses, these do scale up a little bit with some of our active abilities. Through our passives, we have our shadow passives uh, that will get us over 21,000 spell and physical resistance. Doesn't seem like too much, but we do have a lot of damage mitigation, which we'll talk about when we get into the sets and the skills. So I do have my attributes split. I have less in max Magicka, 24 points into Magicka, 40 into Stamina. The reason for that really is because Nightblades do have a passive that gives them extra Magicka. So you don't need quite as many points here to keep the stats similar. Though you do want a little bit extra Stamina in my opinion. Uh, that's why I have 25,000 max Stamina and only 24,000 max Magicka. This is because some of our recoveries are gonna scale with the highest resource. I'm using the purple tri-stat food here. This gives you the most stats possible, though you can improve this with the gold quality Bewitched Sugar Skulls. Uh, I don't have any right now, but you can get a few extra stats from that. Lover Mundus is gonna be ideal. This gives you over 4,000 physical and spell penetration, which is great. That's gonna mean our Magicka abilities hit harder as well as our stamina abilities. This is one of the best Mundus stones you can use for a hybrid build for sure. Now for the race, I do definitely think Dark Elf is gonna be ideal for this. That's because again, we are setting up a hybrid here, so we have to split our resources pretty evenly, and Dark Elf is gonna be the best for that because they get both max Magicka and max Stamina at the same time through their racial passives. You can see 1875 for each there. Now, the Flame Resistance, not really a big deal, but what also is great is the Ruination passive. You get both weapon and spell damage at the same time. Again, making this really ideal for a hybrid setup. Now, yes, you can make this build work on other races. I'll talk about this a little bit later, but since we are chugging a lot of potions on this build, Argonian would actually be maybe even slightly better for sustain. So if you have an Argonian Nightblade, now is the time to bring them out. Let's see, potions, as usual, we're using tri-stat potions for the maximum resource returns. So let's jump into the gear sets next. Starting off with our first five piece set on this build, we're using New Moon Acolyte. We're gonna put this on the weapons, two pieces on the weapons and three pieces on the body. Now this is a crafted set. I'm actually using two crafted sets on this build. So really where you put it doesn't really matter. It's probably gonna depend a lot on what traits you have researched. 
or what pieces you might be able to buy on guild traders. Uh, it gives you weapon and spell critical, weapon and spell damage, physical and spell penetration, which are really hard buffs to get, by the way, as well as 481 weapon and spell damage at gold. And that does scale up with our major brutality and major sorcery. So probably closer to 600 actual weapon and spell damage from this set. It is amazing for hybrid builds. Uh, with the one downside that it does increase the cost of your abilities by 5%. Now, on this build specifically, I don't really have a tr uh, problem at all with sustain. That's because I am using potions a lot. Now, like I said, I am running it on my weapons. We've got the dual wield front bar, main hand Nernhund, that just gives us extra spell and weapon damage. And then offhand is going to be a precise. Uh, these are both swords, by the way. The so the nice thing about swords is it does actually buff both your magicka-based abilities and your stamina-based abilities, so definitely think about that. I am using poisons on the front bar. Uh, I just have the basic crown poisons right now. You can craft something better than this if you want. For the back bar, of course, we've got the infused bow. That's because we want that weapon and spell damage glyph to proc every five seconds. It gives us well over 500 weapon and spell damage, so again, very nice for a hybrid setup. And I'm just using three pieces on the body. Now this is actually a heavy armor setup, so I've got the heavy chest, heavy legs, and heavy feet, all in Divines. Divines is going to make that lover Mundus Stone work a little bit better. Try stat glyphs on as many pieces as possible. If you can only afford three, then definitely put it on your big pieces, like your legs uh, and your chest. But if you can get it on all seven, you'll have the most stats possible. Now for our other five piece set, I'm going with something that's a little bit unique, a little bit different, uh, also a crafted set. And what I decided to try here is actually the Clever Alchemist set. Now this actually works a lot better right now on the PTS server, but it will get updated on the live server very soon as well. They actually decreased the cooldown of the set. They made the buff last longer. So you can see what this does is it gives you max health, max health, weapon and spell damage. And then when you drink a potion during combat, so you need to be in active combat, you increase your weapon and spell damage by 675 for 20 seconds. What makes this really interesting is you can combine this with infused jewelry with this enchantment. It's called alchemical acceleration. Basically, that just reduces the cooldown of your potions. You now at base, this is a five second cooldown, but with the infused trait, it actually goes up to eight seconds. Now, a little bit of math here, but since I'm using this on three jewelry pieces, eight times three, that's a 24 second cooldown reduction. Potions normally last 45 seconds, 45 second base cooldown. Minus the 24 seconds from our glyphs gives us a 21 second cooldown on potions. And the new Clever Alchemist will last 20 seconds. That means you have only one second of downtime to proc this insane buff. It's a really interesting way to play the Nightblade. You know, I mentioned earlier, you can play an Argonian. Argonians also get bonus resources when they use a potion. Also, I thought this would be a great set to run on the Nightblade because Nightblades also get some bonuses for using potions. Uh, you get 20 ultimate back, for example, every time you use a potion as a Nightblade. And we're basically using potions every 20 seconds on this build. So we get tons of sustain, tons of ultimate generation. And look at that, just massive weapon and spell damage. I think this is a great setup on the Nightblade. Now, yes, you will go through potions basically twice as fast. But keep in mind, you can use any potion really to keep the buff up. So you can use trash stamina potions. You can use trash magicka potions that you just pick up when you kill enemies. I definitely recommend having both on a quick slot. That way you can use whichever one you're lowest on just to proc that weapon and spell damage. And then maybe keep your good potions like your tri-stat potions for boss battles. Now, if you want something that's just easier to pull off uh, where you don't need as many potions, for example, a great other set you can use in place of that would be Shackle Breaker. So if you don't like the, the potion build, then I would just run New Moon Acolyte and then I would run Shackle Breaker. So we've got the New Moon, we've got the Clever Alchemist. Then of course, for the monster set, I had to use Iceheart. Iceheart is gonna make soloing just so much easier on this build uh, because we don't have a damage shield, really. I decided not to use the two-handed brawler, though you could definitely switch to a two-hander if you want. But this automatic damage shield, you can see it gives us 8,600 damage shield for six seconds. Uh, this also increases with our champion points. So you're actually getting closer to almost 10,000 max damage shield when using this set. It does proc very easily. 
basically every six seconds. So if your goal is to do some of the more difficult dungeons, maybe even do some veteran dungeons, world bosses, I would definitely recommend picking this up. But like I said, it's not absolutely necessary. You can swap in other things here and you can always run two hand with brawler for another damage shield. So very quickly talking about weights, I am using five heavy on the Nightblade build. Nightblades have a lot of synergy actually with heavy armor builds. We'll talk about this more with the passives, but basically the more heavy armor pieces you wear, the longer your armor buff becomes uh, and it actually scales up the more pieces you wear. So I think heavy armor does make sense on a Nightblade solo build. Your damage isn't quite as high as like a medium or light armor build, but you get the tankiness, you get the armor buff, and you get some extra sustain and health. So it is kind of nice for soloing. So I have Again, divines on all my pieces, five pieces of heavy. Ideally, you'd want that on the headpiece, chest, shoulders, legs, and feet. And then on my other two pieces, I am using two pieces of light here. That's just because I wanted a little bit of extra cost reduction for my Magicka abilities. Some of the Magicka abilities that we have uh, are a bit costly, so you do get extra cost reduction here. Though you could also run just like a medium hands here and you get a little bit more max stats if you're using the undaunted passives. Then again, I think I mentioned infused for the clever alchemist jewelry if you're going this route. Uh, with the potion cooldown glyphs, if you decide to go shackle breaker, I would still recommend infused. I would just do one spell damage, one weapon damage, and then maybe a cost reduction of your choice, either stamina or magicka cost reduction based on what you feel you need the most. So checking out the skills next, first on our dual wield bar, We've got Killer's Blade. This comes from the Assassination skill line. It's the first skill that you get. You're going to choose the Killer's Blade morph. That is the Stamina morph. There's also a Magicka morph. There's not really a huge difference between the two. Uh, you do get some healing here on the Stamina morph, which is nice. And we do get some sustain back from our passives. And really just why I like this is because I wanted to run Dual Wield, but Dual Wield does not have a single target execute skill. So the fact that I can grab this from my Nightblade toolkit really makes the build work. You really do want a execute on your front bar all the time when you're soloing, if possible. The second up, we've got Blood Craze. Blood Craze comes from the dual wield skill line. This is the second ability you get. And we've chosen Blood Craze here as the morph because of the healing. Uh, you can see this does do physical bleed damage for 10 seconds. It also gives us a nice heal over time for 10 seconds. And what you'll see from this build, the way I've set up the front bar at least, is I have a heal on almost every single ability that I'm using. So we just have tons and tons of heals coming in every second or every two second, and we're really stacking up those heal over time abilities. Next up, we have Sap Essence. Sap Essence comes from the Siphoning skill line. This is actually the last skill you get in Siphoning, and it is the Magicka Morph. So our first Magicka ability on this hybrid setup. The reason why Sap Essence is very, very superior to the stamina morph is again we do get healing so this does aoe damage around us and then also aoe healing you can see we get about 1500 base heal plus 20 percent more healing for each enemy hit so the more enemies you have up around you the more that heal is going to increase also you don't even need an enemy to actually get the heal uh, so you can actually spam this with no enemies around and get some healing back now, the other reason why this is very good for the hybrid build is it does give us our major damage buffs, both major brutality and major sorcery. Uh, so we're getting our weapon and spell damage increased by 20% in both cases. So this is absolutely essential uh, on the hybrid build. Next up is kind of a flex spot, and I'll tell you three really good abilities you can run here. First is Deadly Cloak. Deadly Cloak is from the dual wield skill line again. This gives you a nice damage over time as well as major evasion. Now what that buff does is it gives you 25% reduced damage from any area effect attack. So basically if I'm in heavy AOE fighting, you know the red stuff on the ground, then I'm going to make sure I have my deadly cloak on the bar because that's going to reduce all that coming AOE damage. Now if you have a purely single target fight and you want to increase your damage a little bit, one thing you can slot instead is going to be... Barbed Trap from the Fighter's Guild skill line. This is another nice skill to run here. It gives you better dot damage, it gives you a nice buff, and it gives you a root as well. Uh, so this, again, is very nice for single target fights. And lastly, something you can put here, uh, just if you really, really need healing, 
I will use this sometimes, especially in veteran dungeons, is I will actually slap on Swallow Soul in this position. Uh, this does actually magic damage, but it also gives me a heal over time. And it's very good, again, just for keeping up those heals. So potentially, you know, you could be getting a heal from Killer's Blade. You get the heal from Blood Craze. You get heals coming in from Sap Essence. You have a heal over time with Swallow Soul. And you can get some healing from Reaper's Mark. So there's lots of healing going on, which, which basically makes the build work in terms of survivability. Now then last up, we got Reaper's Mark. This, I think, is also very good for hybrids. This does come from the Assassination skill line. It's the second to last ability. And the reason why this is good is it gives you those major debuffs, both Major Fracture and Major Breach. So that's reducing your enemy's physical and spell resistance by 50 to 80 for 20 seconds. Check out the heal that we get too when the target dies. So if you have adds come into the fight, make sure at least one of them is marked because you can get a huge burst heal when that enemy dies, as well as Major Berserk for 5 seconds. That's a 25% increase to your damage done. Uh, that is a short duration, but it's a nice bonus for having this active. Then last up for the front bar ultimate, a couple of options here. I think the best option if you're soloing maybe veteran dungeons or some harder world bosses is you're going to still want temporal guard on your front bar. Uh, this gives you constant minor protection as a passive. It also gives you a free damage shield. So when I block on my front bar, you can see that little uh, bubble around me. This is a 5 to 6k free damage shield that I get just by blocking. So this is very, very good for soloing. Now, if you don't have this ability, because it does come from the Sigic Order skill line, uh, it is the Sigic Order ultimate ability. Uh, so you do need the Somerset chapter for this, and you do need to level up Sigic Order to 10. But let's say you don't have that, then just another option you can put here is going to be Soul Harvest. Soul Harvest is nice, uh, not only for the damage, but for the ultimate you get. You can see there at the bottom, every time you kill an enemy, you get 10 ultimate back. So this is really good for stacking ultimate uh, with some of our other ways, like chugging potions, for example. Now, back bar, of course, is our bow. We're starting off with a magicka ability here. This is debilitate. Gives us a pretty good damage over time for 10 seconds. Gives us a snare, but one of the reasons why I like this too is it gives us minor magicka steal. That's 300 magicka recovery every one second. So if you were to put that on your stat sheet, for example, that'd be about 600 magic recovery. Uh, this does come from the siphoning skill line. It is the third ability that you get. I, again, I do prefer the debilitate morph for that minor magicka steal. The other morph will just give you a little bit more damage, uh, but we do need the sustain on this build. Then next we have dark shade, and dark shade is very critical to this build in a couple ways. Number one, uh, it's is going to give us a very nice debuff here. You can see it gives minor maim, actually in an area of effect. So it does like a little whirlwind slash, and then any enemy that it touches is going to get that 15% damage reduction, meaning basically they do 15% less damage to you. This is very, very important when soloing, especially on some tougher bosses. You want to be hit for less. So make sure your shade is up all the time. Since this is a shadow ability, actually the last ability that you get, we get some very nice passives from this. One very important passive uh, is that we actually get our armor buff. So Shadow Barrier gives us major resolve for six seconds anytime we cast a shadow ability. And this also scales up with our heavy armor, meaning it's gonna last 13 and a half seconds. So that basically is how we get our armor buff on a Nightblade. So it's very important that you cast this ability uh, at least every 12 to 13 seconds just to maintain that buff. Now, of course we have the bow ability Endless Hail next. This does pretty decent damage over time for 14 seconds, but what we really like this is it gives us that Berserker Enchant, basically giving us almost 600 weapon and spell damage every five seconds. Absolutely essential on a hybrid build, in my opinion. Uh, you either need to run Bow on the back bar, or you need to run a Staff with Wall of Elements, and uh, you'll get the same buff either way, but I just wanted to run Bow, in this case, on the Nightblade. Now, next up is Leeching Strikes, Leeching Strikes comes from the Siphoning skill line, second to last ability that you get. And the morphs here are actually fine either way. One morph gives you Magicka Sustain, the other morph gives you Stamina Sustain. I just felt like I needed a little bit more Stamina coming back on this build. Both morphs are good though. They give you the healing back on heavy and light attacks, which is really nice. And like I said, you get that nice burst of Stamina when you recast the ability. 
Then we've got Merciless Resolve. This comes from the Assassination skill line. It is the last ability you get, and much like Leeching Strikes, you can choose either Morph here. They basically are the same. You know, the Magicka Morph might be a little bit better. Uh, that's because you do get a stronger heal from this ability. Uh, but basically, either Morph has the same function. When you cast this buff, it lasts quite a long time now. And then every time you do a light or heavy attack, you get a stack. And when you have five stacks built up, you can either fire off a bow that does uh, extra bonus damage, or you can actually hold on to the stacks. Now, why would you want to hold on to the stacks? Well, that's this top part here. You get 2% damage reduction for every stack. So 2% times five stacks, you get 10% total damage reduction on your character at all times, as long as you don't release the bow proc. So this is a nice option. You can basically either release the bow for more burst damage, or you can hang on to it for more damage reduction. So it depends obviously on the fight. It's a really nice option to have. Finally, for our back bar ultimate, this is what we're gonna be using primarily all the time. Two major options here, I think. First is Ballista. Ballista comes from the bow skill line. Ballista is just the preferred morph because this allows you to move and, and fight at the same time while the Ballista is doing damage. Uh, but it does do very nice damage. And then for AoE, I would recommend Soul Tether. This is very good for clearing through trash, uh, as well as boss fights where you might have a lot of adds that come in. This gives you a lot of healing as well as a nice stun. Now, the one thing to keep in mind about Soul Tether is it does have a cast time. It has a 5.5 second cast time. Uh, that means you cannot cast it immediately. So if you're taking a beating, make sure you cast this early because sometimes you can get interrupted. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but for the majority of like single target fights, I'm using Ballista anyways for the extra damage. Quickly, let's just talk about some of the important passives. Now you want to definitely pick up all of your class passives. They are generally pretty good. So under Shadow, these are extremely important. We did talk about Shadow Barrier already. This does get stronger the more pieces of heavy armor you wear. Uh, that's why I thought it made sense just to kind of build this as a heavy armor Nightblade setup. And Refreshing Shadows is also very good. You get 15% uh, health, stamina, and magicka recovery. So it's great to stack recovery on your Nightblade. Then in Siphoning, I mentioned this at the beginning, uh, we do get ultimate back when you drink a potion, which if you decide to go the potion route on this build with Clever Alchemist, you'll be getting 20 ultimate back every 20 seconds, which is pretty insane combined with the just regular ultimate generation that you have on any character. Now, Magicka Flood is also very nice on the hybrid. You get 8% max Magicka. That's why you need to make sure you have a siphoning ability on both bars. Uh, on our front bar, you will always have Sap Essence. That will give you that 8% max Magicka. And on the back bar, you'll have Leeching Strikes. So that takes care of that. Now, obviously, you'll want all of your dual wield passives as well as your bow passives. For light armor, you actually do not need all of these. Basically, you want the first three passives, and then you can skip these last two because you do need five pieces of light armor to benefit from those. Uh, medium armor, you can pick up these if you have any pieces of medium. And then obviously, all of your heavy armor passives, super important to get those. Under Fighter's Guild, you do always want Banish the Wicked. This gives you extra ultimate when killing undead, werewolves, or daedra. If you are using Barb Trap, then you also want Intimidating Presence. That's going to give you a good cost reduction on that ability, as well as Slayer. That'll give you some extra bonus weapon damage. Mage's Guild, we don't need. Psychic Order, if you do happen to have this, I definitely recommend it. The best passive is going to be Concentrated Barrier. This gives us that 5,000 damage shield on our front bar. Anytime we block, and this can increase with champion points, so it's excellent. Uh, Undaunted, you will want Undaunted Metal. That gives you 4 to 6% uh, basically extra stats based on the types of armor that you're using. Assault and Support, you technically do not need to PvP at all on this build, uh, though you could slot Vigor. Uh, if you happen to have that, that would give you a nice heal here instead of Swallow Soul. Always pick up your Racial Skills and then Alchemy Medicinal Use just to make those potions last the full 45 seconds. Then let's talk about champion points here. Uh, CP is, is kind of difficult to do. On hybrid builds, to be honest, you have to spread out your points quite a bit. So just keep that in mind. But in the green tree, we've got 23 into Warlord, 49 into Tenacity, 43 Healthy, 56 Arcanist, 56 Mooncalf. So we're trying to put a lot into recoveries here. Then 23 Shadow Ward, 20 into Tumbling. Uh, in the blue tree, this is where it gets a little bit crazy. 
19 into Blessed, 23 into Elfborn, 49 Elemental Expert, 10 into Spell Erosion, 31 Master at Arms, 56 Thaumaturge, 23 Precise Strikes, 10 Piercing, 49 Mighty, then in the Red Tree, 72 into Ironclad, 56 into Hardy and Elemental Defender, 34 Thick Skinned, 2 Heavy Armor Focus, 27 Quick Recovery, 23 into Bastion, Bastion Effects, things like Ice Heart uh, and that Sigic Order Damage Shield. So if you're using those, you definitely want Bastion. If not, you can put those points in another node for sure. But that covers champion points. Uh, then the outfit style, really quick if you're interested. So we've got the Sapiark Helm, that's in medium. Then we've got the Worm Cult Chest. Legs have actually got the Zivkin style, though you could do Worm Cult on here as well. We've got Worm Cult feet and hands. And shoulders, we've got the Yakudin epaulets. Hey everybody, thank you so much again for watching this video. As usual, I'll have some gameplay here at the end so you can see how the build plays and how it feels. This one was a lot of fun to put together. I'm glad I was able to do a dual wield hybrid build finally. It makes perfect sense to me on the Nightblade class. Uh, so it's just been a lot of fun to play and I think I'm gonna keep playing it. Probably put together a couple of solo dungeon runs as well that I will put up on the channel here pretty soon. And then I've got two more hybrid classes to tackle. I still need to do a hybrid Necromancer as well as a hybrid, what's left? Hybrid Sorcerer, yep, that's the one. So uh, I continue to look for those as well as more ESO builds, guides, and discussion right here on YouTube. Of course, if you enjoyed the video today, don't forget to crush that like button. It really does help out the channel. Make sure you subscribe for more of that ESO content in the very near future. And until then, I will see you around in the next video.